Cheers! Cheers. Welcome, Welcome to, to Movie, Movie Bitches! RuPaul's Drag Race, Season 4, Episode 6! <laughs> First things first, shout out to our wine sponsor, Wink. Try wink.com slash movie bitches. You get $22 off your first month of wine. Just so many things. Wine! wine. <laughs> How about them dolphins? How about them dolphins? <laughs> Screaming queen. How about those dolphins? Screaming queen. So Kenny went home last yep. week, and they're all sort of standing around. I did sort of love Sharon's, like, Nixon Now crop top oh my God. t shirt it's funny, she had worn like a, a Palin McCain or something shirt. Yeah. She must have just been like, you know what? I think my workroom shirts are going to be like political <laughs> campaign. Like dated. Failed campaign. Failed campaign. Well, I don't know if this one, Nixon probably wouldn't have failed. Depends on it what depends year. Depends on exactly. It made me laugh. Yeah. <laughs> it was like a little crop top. This like gay man is like, Nixon, now. <laughs> You're rolling in your grave. <laughs> Rue walks in and she's got this sort of fabulous, I mean, it's just a vest with this big red and black polka dotted cravat. Rue announces the mini challenge is gonna, it's spring break. And tramp stamps. <laughs> tramp stamps. I mean, this was Willem's episode. She was like on fire, like she was well, ready for I this did, episode. I loved that Willem was basically like, I'm gonna win this challenge. Yeah. Cause I've decided that I'm gonna win. And then I did. did. Uh, but yes, it's spring break, and they're gonna do a wet t-shirt contest. They all have RuPaul shirts. Shirts, and they all have to sort of cut them up and decorate yeah. them. My look is, God, I want to go to Miami, but I can only afford Fort Lauderdale. So, so I, I went for Fort, Fort Lauderdale. Lauderdale. But so they go outside, day drag, love it, and this crowd of this crowd of men. I mean, they were men. They were men. Yes. I I just it, I was so confused as to who they were. They were just gay men that they found to. Be to like, pretend yes! to be straight, though, like it was like, oh yeah, chicks, wet t-shirt contest. Yeah, I mean, I think it was like who pumped up the crowd and was like, sure. yeah, sure. bitch, like yes. the most. Yes. I don't know. They all have to come out and get dr drenched with their big old fake tits. And I did love that, like, they blurred the nipples. Of course, only when they were on the body. That's what I love. It's, it's like, like, what is this? You can show the breastplates all in a line. Yes, when they're like uh, their own entity. Right. Don't Nick worry about time. it. So. so silly. And then I did remember this very vividly for whatever reason, Sharon's character. I mean, she looks like Angeline. I never want to create a character that someone would want to fuck. I like to mock sexiness. Oh, Such a good line. Yeah, she's just like, I like to mock sexiness yeah. or whatever. And I was like, that really stuck in my mind. Yeah. An iconic thing Sharon said. Absolutely. I think that's a good way of distilling Sharon's drag persona you right. know it's like oh is she sexy no she objectively wants people to not ever find her sexual right. just glue a bunch of trash bags to myself and cut them open <laughs> garbage falls out <laughs> and then fifi's tits oh my just God. i mean they just well she's really working them too hard and, yeah, and, and then they break fly and off her wig, her comes, wig off. comes off i mean she herself was like it was a mess yeah <laughs> It did not work out for me. Willem was very sexy. Very, well, very sexual villain. Engaging. Willem knew what was up. You know, it's like, okay, cool. Well, she really commanded the room, or should I say the parking lot, and drew them in. And really, yeah. you know, it's not necessarily about looking sexy. It helps that she did, but yeah. like, it's about drawing them in and really. And like telling a story. Let me, exactly. I'm going to work them. every angle. And I yeah. think that this episode was a great example of Willem showing how you need to tell a story on the runway, how you need to do more. Mm -hmm. Just because they give you a boat doesn't mean that you have to wear it the whole time. Oh, I mean, like I said, she decided she was going to win this yes. episode. She yes. decided, I'm going to slay every moment of this episode. Oh, I did. And then Latrice, they had to blur out her, her pussy. <laughs> good. You know my alter ego is a stripper. <laughs> You know my alter ego as a stripper. Everyone seemed to get into it and sort of had a, had fun with it. Yes, Chad looked just like a housewife. I mean, it was like, oh, that's someone that I've seen in Beverly Hills. So Willem wins, yeah. and we get back into the workroom, and Rue gives everyone like a little history lesson oh, yes. about Stonewall. I mean, I did think it was weird. So she basically is like, and Stonewall, it was a drag queen who threw the first brick. Wasn't it a trans woman? In, yeah. In, yeah. At the Stonewall Riots, it was a drag queen who had the charisma, uniqueness, nerve, and talent to dig her heels in and start a revolution. Regardless of 
the labels people sure. were given, I thought it was weird she didn't say her name. She and did, then well, she, she said, said Marsha P. Later. Yeah, yeah. But I was like, oh, we're just gonna kind of... But it was like a general, a very vague well, history lesson. Every year since, drag queens have been the shining stars of pride celebrations around the world. Yay for specificity would be good. <laughs> But I think they, they probably were like, let's just be vague, and that way when we awkwardly ask all of the queens to be like, who knows what about pride, <laughs> then Could that gives lesson. them, you know, it's like, oh, well, Mar you know, Rue didn't say it, but I know that Marsha, you know, like, it gives them more to talk about. Sure. And then tells them they're going to do their own sort of pride parade. Of sorts. Float. Yes, with floats that are boats. And Willem. Here's all these uh, handkerchiefs, oh, yes. and you get to assign everybody a color. I would have liked, or I mean, it would still can happen. I would like a silly hanky code mini challenge. Oh yeah! Like if it's in this side of the pocket. Well, the colors different. meant different things, okay. and then the left or right pocket means like active or passive, or rather like top or bottom. Essentially, oh, okay. there's like charts about it. The yeah. periwinkle, you know, hanky yeah. in the right pocket means that you like someone to, I don't know, you know. Right, right. But yeah. there is a code for all of it. I like it. That yeah. would be fun. Uh, there's eight colors. No, that's what's crazy about the, the hanky old... code is that the hanky oh. code actually has like 20. And you're like, <laughs> you guys, though, how it's am I supposed to like, really oh, specific. yeah, that's a hot pink. I have a hot pink hanky, not a light pink hanky. You know, then it's like the difference between like, Choking and I don't even know. You know, it's like tender. Oh, yeah, exactly. Tender cuddling. I don't, I don't know. know. I do like that as an idea for a mini challenge, though. Right. But anyway, so but Willem anyway. gets to pick. I thought this was like, really it could nice. Be, sorry to keep harping oh, on this, no. but it could be. You know, when they do like um, bring out not just the two pick, but the, oh, the whole yes. pick, right? And it could be like you have like, to match your hankies or something, right? And they could have. Like cute jeans on or whatever, like well, little uh, or no Daisy jeans, Dukes jean shorts, yeah. yeah, jean shorts with the hankies, and yeah. it's like I have to. Oh, is Ooh. my do my briefs match my hanky? I don't know something, something. but I like I it. I like it. They could partner up with like a real like kink gear sponsorship. Uh -huh, I don't think uh -huh. that's gonna happen now uh -huh. that they're on VH1, but I'd be down uh -huh. for it. I did watching this. I'm like, I just love how gay this show is. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Like I was just like, yes, and yeah. I feel like it's gotten slightly less gay. A little bit, but anyway, I thought that Willem did a really good, fair job of you know, it was like, here's all these hankies. I think it was a good idea, particularly for Willem, because she doesn't really have any particular friends. No, you know, like it wasn't nor like, particular enemy. It's not like she was trying to fuck anyone up. No, and and what does it really matter? They're just colors. I mean, really, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, she knew what colors she wanted, so she could pick her outfit. Yeah. As long as she didn't it. pick green, then she's fine. Because Michelle Visage, that's the only reason. That made me laugh. It made me laugh that Sharon I know. randomly got green. I know. I hate but, green. But at least she could like. Well, that of course. I hate it. I hate green. I told her not to wear green. I hate it. Jiggly gets orange. Yes, and she does not like it. She's not having it. As we've seen in the first episode, I don't think Jiggly excels in no. a creative, no. crafty. She said it herself. Yeah, that's not her, that is not her strong suit. No, but I think she also started to feel the pressure of seeing everyone else be creative, and it was like, oh, theirs are better. Oh, I have to come up with something that's more, you know, like, mm. and not being able to come up with that on your own then right. seems like it just put her I in mean, a further spiral. There were, there was an awful lot of boats where I was like, this looks clean. Like, it doesn't look like a mess, but I don't, there was a few boats where it didn't look like a mess. Sure. But I was like, I couldn't tell you what their theme message was. No. was. So no. I was like, I think she got bogged down on like, yeah. I have to have a message and a theme. Yeah. And like, the people that did that, instead of just like, I made a pretty boat. That was a mistake, I think. Because sure. it ultimately didn't really fucking matter. Well, it didn't, didn't. We will talk about the judging. We will talk about it. We'll get into it. So we find out Sharon is like, oh, green in the original flag, like represented nature. And yeah. then they start sort of breaking down pride and, and the history of it all. So who here knows what Stonewall is? Stonewall was in June of 69. The cops decided to go in and cause some trouble. And Chad is just like, well, who knows about Stonewall? Oh like he's just <laughs> throwing it out there. Once again, Chad knows what, she's a professional. We got another one this episode. Two. Good. Yeah, right? Because I am what? A professional. professional. Chad, what was it like to be there? You were, what, 29 at the time? <laughs> uh. <laughs> was it fun being, like, right there in the center of it all? <laughs> you bitch. It's good. good. And, I mean, essentially the entire episode breaks down into, let's tell Jiggly what 
you know, the history of gay yes. rights. And she will just be like, you know what? I didn't think about this so hard before. Yep. I should have. Yep. She, was, she wasn't like defensive about it, which was no. nice. Yeah, that's true. But it was very like, well, and here's, now we'll tell you about this. Yeah. And you should know. Exactly. And then we'll cut away to Willem just doing the most. Oh my god, I love my boat already. Doing all of it. All, all of it. It was the Willem show this week. She decided that it was, she, and then it yep, was. Yep. I feel like there was a lot of workroom yeah. scenes. Well, because we had to see them build their floats. Well, I feel like if this episode was coming out now, it would just be like, oh, and then they built the floats. They had the floats built for them, and, and then... And then they just had to... Yeah. You know, it's annoying. It is annoying. I miss the process I do too. of, like, and then I made this, and yeah. this is how I came up with this. Because then you get to know more, like, how they got to their final product or yeah. whatever. But there was a lot of just sort of hanging out. It wasn't even, like, yeah. really big fights or big scenes no. or, like, Latrice take us to church. Like, it wasn't, no, like, it wasn't, it wasn't anything iconic. It was just a lot of Jiggly and Willem. Clashing. But kind of joking. It was. <laughs> Fucking swallowed glitter. You've swallowed worse. We're going to have dinner soon. Stop eating the glitter. God damn it, Jiggly. Fuck you. And then Dita calls Willem a fucking cunt. You fucking cunt. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's just like, you fucking cunt. But it was like kind of jokey. It was all kind of jokey where everyone was clearly irritated and annoyed by right, Willem. Right, And then Willem would just then double down on that behavior yeah. and be yeah. like, I'm going to do it all up. Like, it was just like, fuck you. This is my episode. And then Rue comes into the workroom and she's yes. sort of going around. They were really obsessed with this, like, everyone has to be fashion forward. Everyone was sort of like... We're not really, I mean, we're not really doing that, right? Like, like Milan was like... A flashback to the future. A flashback to the future. Yes. Yeah. But we're asking you to be fashion forward. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do a flashback to, to the, the future. future. Like, everyone is sort of making up weird excuses, like, uh, a bright yellow. I, yeah. I don't know what to do with this. None of them were fashion forward. No, none of them. Literally none, none of, of them. None of them. It was a bad idea to just, just, just make it be... Rainbow show, Pride. Show us your pride. Yep. And then she announces that the guest judges are going to be Kelly Osborne, yes. who is fabulous, and Polly Perrett from NCIS. I just love that Cher is like, How many times did you work with her, Willem? Just once, so fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Latrice is going around. It seems like Latrice and Willem are bonding. I mean, yeah. they, they do more so throughout the season. And Latrice is like, Your boat is fucking sickening, yeah. bitch. Or whatever that cuts to Fifi's confessional. Oh my god. Sickening? more like absolutely disgusting. It was funny because earlier on in this episode, I forget what Fifi was saying, but she was talking about something and I was like, oh, why did I hate Fifi so much? She seems so sweet. Oh God, this is why. My boat is the best. My boat is pretty. Selfish bitch, learn your words. We'll be in the bottom two. My boat, boat is the best. best. And once again, Fifi, she's so like a hundred percent in her opinions yes. or whatever. Like it's there's never like any wiggle room to like walk it back or exactly. whatever and be like, well, I was pretty sure about this. Selfish bitch, learn your words. We'll be in the bottom two. She's going home. home. It's like, oh, or she won the challenge. Just because you find someone annoying, right? Doesn't mean that they're going exactly. Home. But this was kind of ugly. Willem says to Jiggly, like, oh girl, is that a men's or a woman's shirt? Because I clocked the. The bra like hook or whatever. Well, like, w women's shirts have, have the like little... The, no one ever uses them. You just cut them out. It's super annoying. But anyway. <laughs> Why would you bring this up? At the time, not knowing... Right. You'd be like, oh, that was kind of weird. Right. right? But no. I feel like Willem probably knew yeah. that Jiggly was transitioning. You cross-dresser? <laughs> We're supposed to be boys today and you're cross-dressing. It was so normative. You know, it's like, oh, yeah. this is the boy day. Like, yeah. you can't... Well, was there was a lot of that too, even with Milan. I mean, we'll talk about that, but like, yeah. But the idea of like, oh, well, girl, you're too androgynous, and you can't play with masculine and feminine, and it's like, let's maybe not define these. Yeah, I mean, drag... I would say Milan didn't do a particularly no. fabulous job at being androgynous. No, she can certainly try all she wants. Yes, <laughs> agreed. <laughs> particularly in hindsight, knowing that they probably all knew, it's pretty gross. Yeah. And just like, well, you saw that she was having a bad day already and, and you really decided to really yeah. just get in there. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Ugh. Her slick ass comments are gonna drive me crazy. Watching my boat. Shut up. You shut up. 
ugly bitch. But she's having a really hard time like deciding what the theme of her boat is and what yes. it's gonna look like and all yes. these things. So she finally figures it out and she's just keep, she just keeps me like, bright colors, San Tropez. San Tropez. Very San Tropez, bright colors. Very Saint Tropez. It's real Saint Tropez. With bright colors. Yeah, and Saint Tropez. You know, like Saint Tropez. <laughs> the whole one. Just, it's very Saint Tropez. I was dying. I was like, what? What? What it happened? Really what got in her head that she was just like, I'll just keep saying Saint Tropez. She decided wear... she was gonna wear a bathing suit. Yep. That's what happened. Yep. Very Saint Tropez. Bright colors. Very Saint Tropez. And then it gets down to. The nitty gritty, like everyone is lined up, chat. I mean, chat. Who's after Peppermint? Who's that? Why, why y'all after brand new? Like, Apparently, was, Jiggly because she's still fucking getting dressed. It well, was it crazy. showed every. I mean, a bunch of people that were like fully head to toe ready, yeah. and she was like didn't have any makeup on. Right. Like it was like, oh shit, yeah. bitch. And I mean, I'm sure there's editing there too. Somewhat, but but Chad was not having it because she is a professional. professional. I did love it when Jiggly's like all running around. She's like, shit, where the fuck are my tits? <laughs> Jiggly is a hot mess. Oh shit, where the fuck are my tits? We will be right back after this quick commercial break with the runway and a lip sync and some untucked drama. Oh my God. Drama. This was something. Something. <laughs> <laughs> So Rue walks down the runway in this gold, it was like a, a sack, what's the, you know when you do like the potato sack races? <laughs> potato sack races. There you go. This was like honey mahogany, but like done right. You really? know what I mean? I didn't like it. I didn't like love it, but I was like, this is how you wear a belted caftan. Sure. You know what I mean? And the category is pride, pride show, flag, float. you're a color. Show, hope floats. Hope floats. <laughs> Remember that movie? I do remember that movie. Remember how Sandra Bullock's name in that movie is Birdie? No. It is Birdie. Well, well, well. Birdie, Birdie, Birdie. But anyway, Hope Floats in my boat. The theme was Hope Floats, not Willem Floats or Sinks or whatever. <laughs> he says, oh, oh, oh. The theme was Hope Floats, not Can Willem's Face Float on a Freaking Boat. That's not what it was for. So the runway starts and we get all of these gay oh, sailors. Yes. With their little, with their little waves. It was like Daddy's Boy. It was Daddy's Boy. Daddy's Boy. It was good. Yeah, silly and I loved it. Yeah. That's what I mean by like, just it's so gay. The gayest, yes. It's just like... Yep. Yes. Yep. Unapologetically gay. There you go. My favorite kind of gay. So first on the runway is Chad Michaels in this Miss Congeniality 2 showgirl look. I mean, I mean, it was... She was like a pretty pink showgirl. It was, yeah. Not fashion forward. It was not fashion it was forward. Very it was much very a polished. It was very much a costume. She looked really pretty. She did. Her boat, I don't really remember. And I don't remember any sort of theme or, or pride related messaging. This whole thing was safe. She pulled off the walk pretty good. Yep. You know, some people it looked weirder. Sure. She kind of sold it. Yeah. This little pony showgirl look. Maybe it would have been more fabulous if the headdress was gigantic. I mean, it, well, it was like really, if it yeah. was like Miss Congeniality Yeah, if too. it was like a headdress. This was sort of just like a, a fascinator headdress. Sure. You know, it was like cute, but if it, it wasn't had been like, like fuck off huge. Yeah. You know, like an Asia O'Hara headdress. Yes. Like, yeah. Yes. To this. Oh boy. Oh boy. So then next down the runway was Gina Ritz. In these Mrs. Claus pants. I <laughs> with the Pilgrim belt. What was this? Wow. Wow. That's what they were. It's Don't even so pretend. <laughs> she had the pilgrim belt. She was like on the Mayfair. Oh my God. Mayfair? May She's on like the Mayflower. She's the toast of Mayfair. She's the toast of Mayfair. <laughs> she was like on the Mayflower, you know, coming from the North Pole. Sure. These Mrs. Claus harem pants. <laughs> and um, this cropped heart t shirt. The heart t-shirt, okay, so this kind of reminded me of like a look that Ty would wear in Clueless. 100%! I mean, to wear a crop top and harem pants was different. Sure. I didn't like it. I, I didn't dislike it as much as the judges really seemed to hate it. It didn't look good with the boat. No. So, you know, cutting off, because she's got such great legs. So of course. Cutting off the legs with the pant and then the big boat and then cutting off the torso with the crop top and it just like didn't look Good. No, not particularly. Together. You know what's interesting? And it wasn't all red. Right. I wonder, like, I almost wish that she could have 
put together a better pant. Like, I mean, even if this was a, a jumpsuit and just had a halter top with the red, mm. it would have been more of like an outfit. No one really played with the length of the boats, yeah. except for Willem, because she has such great legs. What if it would just covered her entire body, yeah. but all of her legs were visible? Yes. And it was just like, ooh, what, I'm this boat, but I have these fabulous legs. Yes, yeah. stomp, yeah. stomp, bitch. I, that could have been more fun. That would have been fun. You know, people didn't seem to be willing to go outside the box with the boat. So the next was Jiggly Caliente. Um, I, I, uh... she, she was so covered up. Yes. So first, it's, firstly, she has a poncho on. Yeah. With the boat, so yeah. you really you can't, can't see, see anything. Anything. Then she decided she was gonna put the turkey tails yep. on the front and, and the, the back, back, so you really couldn't yep. see her at all. It was oh so God. like ah, I'm hiding under yeah. a sheet or something. Exactly. It was, it was like weird. a fort. Yeah. It was. Yeah. And then there just seemed to be scattered crap glued to it. God, I mean, that's. That's really the only way you can describe it. Does this look like an anchor? It kind of looks like a dick. It does look like the, the penis. <laughs> and she tried. You could see that there was effort put into it. Yeah. But there was such a lack of a concept that it was just a... I wouldn't even say concept, just like a artistic vision. Sure. Because I don't think anyone really had that many concepts. Oh, well, Milan certainly had a concept. Now, was that evident to anyone aside from her, like, dissertation? No. But she had a concept. She did. <laughs> we'll get to it. Yeah. I, I was interested, I'll be honest. Yeah, I liked the love you for you idea. Yeah. You know, she seemed to really embrace that, like, let's put this message of positivity and blah, blah, blah. Right. But it was, I think, too little, too late. Yeah. And she it was couldn't just, salvage. You know, scribbled on there at the bottom. There. It was. Well, exactly. <laughs> you know, it wasn't. <laughs> she came up with that idea too so late. So she tagged it five minutes before. Exactly, that. exactly. Oh, love you for you, girl. Well, so yeah, we've arrived. The uh, Milan Express has arrived. The invasion, the Milan oh, invasion. Woo! I mean, she was hammy at the fuck she up. She was. She comes out there, she's a little choo-choo trick, to tugboat, woo woo, I don't know. I guess Steamboat Willie, I don't know. I liked all the wigs on the back. Yep. The heads and the yep. wigs, I was like, what's this? Well, and then she explained it. I mean, like, it was fun. It was fun like, oh, not knowing, yes. exactly. Yeah. And then she explained it, and it was like, oh, not only was it fun and looked cool, but it had a, a point and a purpose yes. and, like, a message. And I appreciated that. I wanted to represent the history of the drag performance invasion on Fire Island with the girls who have long passed, who have paved the way for me to go forward in the future. She gets bogged down. Yeah. She has too many ideas. It's like a Thorgy syndrome. Yes. It's like too cerebral yeah. and too many ideas. Yes. And also it's just like, okay, I love where you're going with this, but it has to be evident and succinct in a fucking boat. We don't have time to, for you to do a PowerPoint. Exactly. And like a collection to tell the story and right. weave a tale of, of, you know, Fire Island amongst the years. But her outfit. Oh yeah. The gold. Oh, the yellow. She's got the yellow afro. Yeah, oh, which is hideous with the black. Spray painted black hair. Like and so it looks like it was falling off her head. Yeah, and then the dress was. What, a, it wasn't a piece really of a dress, it was, it was a piece yeah. of fabric. Yeah. It was very boy. Yes. Um, but not in an interesting way. This didn't necessarily read androgynous as much as it just read boy. It wasn't like, ooh, I'm gonna give you feminine makeup and uh, like feminine body, yeah. but in a masculine outfit or in some sort yes. of twist. That's the problem. It doesn't play with shape no. and makeup along with an outfit. So the next was Sharon Needles in her green, you know. Um, Camp-tastic. Yeah. This was so fun. It was fun. I loved it. She's like, Medusa, I'll turn you into Stonewall. It was silly. <laughs> And her arm is a snake, and she's really hamming it she up. She really was. It took me a really long time to figure out that it was her hand. What? I know that sounds so stupid. Andrew. But I was like, how did she get that thing to move like that? What? And I was like, oh, Jesus, that's her arm, Andrew. Oh, my God. Yeah. But, yeah, so she's like, rrr, rrr, yeah, going yeah. down the runway. Uh, she looks like Mother Nature from Happily Ever After. Sure. Remember that? No. I like that I just said sure and I literally have no idea what you're talking about. I don't know. That just came out. I make my creation. <laughs> Happily Ever After is the unofficial sequel to Snow White after the kiss and waking right. up. Yes. And this time, Oh, and who's in that? 
Everybody. Okay, yeah. Everyone's a voice. Yeah. And the seven dwarfs are women. They're like little ladies. Right. We've talked about this before. Yeah. yeah. But she looked, she was very like kooky mother nature, you know, sure. whatever. And I thought her makeup looked beautiful. Yeah. Sharon always really does well, an interesting palette. Yes. She knows how to use color and change it up within the makeup. I agree. It's I think cool. the makeup wasn't my biggest problem. I thought the wig was a little flat. Yeah, the wig wasn't I could have liked a little bit more volume and then it would have just zhuzhed it up a little bit. Sure. I just thought this was so campy and fun and yeah. then later on the runway she's got her, t her the train of her dress is like a little snake rattle tail. Oh cute. That's she's silly. Like, Oh, man. Or whatever. I mean, her boat. I didn't mind that it looked like a swamp. It was really a swamp thing boat. But you know what? She's from the bayou. Get over it. Get like, over whatever. it. Whatever. That's still a boat. It's something. I remembered it. Sure. It was swamp thing. She was swamp. She she's Adrian Barbeau. She's swamp things woman. <laughs> they were very opinionated this episode. Well, particularly one. We will talk about it. We just it, it, it has to be addressed. Oh my god. So then, next on the runway is Latrice motherfucking Royale, and once again, she turned the corner and I went, yes! Yes! The yes! Sapphire Queen! It was turquoise. Oh, excuse Was it? They kept saying it was, and I was like, that's not... Straight up blue, you That's guys. just like a, like a light blue. Yeah. <laughs> but they kept saying, oh, you're turquoise. Maybe aquamarine? It if was, we're... Yeah, it was like being generous, aquamarine. Yeah. It was not turquoise. No, me. not at all. Lady turquoise. <laughs> Under the sea. Oh my god, it's so good. I mean, it was art. If ever there was an out, like, she doesn't need to audition for the live action Little Mermaid because, like, this is well, her Well, she audition. was like some combination of, like, Ariel's blue sister and, like, Ursula, Ursula. right? Yeah. It was, like, so good. She said she baked them. Oh. Like, she's like, oh, I baked this hair. I don't know if that's, like, a term that I'm not understanding or if she literally Like a face? I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, like, you bake your face? I don't know, but I was like, yes, to oh. whatever the fuck yeah. this is. It's like... Fabulous. She's got these bejeweled lips. I mean, her face. Her face looks everything. It's art. Yeah. The outfit was fine. It was also sort of a piece of fabric. Sure. <laughs> it was the the outfit was just okay, but the the, the makeup was, the was everything. Showcase. Like, yeah. This was the showcase, yeah. and this was like, oh, you wore the right mm -hmm. color. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. But those boots. Oh, the boots. That's right. The boots. The boots and the black belt. Yep. Once again. Oh no. So the next was Willem in the, the blue boat, you know, the best boat in the world that ever has been boated. Are you okay? <laughs> Willem broke me. I don't know. Billy B broke me, let's be real. This was good. I mean, I thought she did a good job with the stars making a pattern. It looked cool. Yeah, I mean, I don't know where she got all those and why she brought them. I mean, she brought like 500 star stickers of her face. Right? I mean, I wouldn't say this was particularly a difficult thing to do. Not at all. But it was a clear idea. Yep. And it utilized all of the things she had very well. I mean, I love that she walks out. She's holding it down here. Yeah. And she walks out and she's like, fuck this boat. I want to look pretty. You yeah. know what I mean? It was like, yeah. I'm going to show off my shape. Yeah. Fuck this. Exactly. I'm going to lay off. anchor. Oh my God. Just like, ah, uh, uh, this like baby anchor. Yeah. I was dying. It was, it was really silly. It was so good. Just like. Oh my okay, goodness, just get out, walk yeah. the runway, and I'm naked. Take it, exactly. I mean, it was so good. She's oh got this, the SJP, like, blue trench coat, yep. and this, like, overall bassless onesie bathing suit denim situation. Wasn't mad at it. I wasn't mad at it. I don't, this is definitely the best that Willem has looked this entire 100%. season. Loved it. Yeah. Thought she looked great. Yeah. Sold That it. little anchor, oh I my mean, God. I died. Ship to shore. <laughs> it was good. So then last on the runway is Fifi O'Hara in this like purple, it's always sci-fi. Yeah, this is very similar to a lot of her other outfits. I was, I wrote down, I feel like I've seen this from her before. I mean, she looked good, the boat, I think hers is the one that said believe on yes. it. Yes, like, and it had like purple. You know, it all looked very good and clean I, yeah. and, and well put together. I mean, it did kind of remind me, I used to have this, um, it was like astronaut Barbie from the 80s and she had like, of course, like a sassy magenta purple space suit. Of course. Because she's Barbie. And it had like shoulder pads oh. and like was cinched at the waist. It was pretty great. Love it. It kind of reminded me of that. For me, I would say, I don't think this is fashion forward. It seemed like a costume. None of them were. Well, sure. But yes, but this in terms of it, like, fully like a costume. And so for them to read Chad's 
for being not fashion forward. Like, I thought Chad's costume, which was also fully a costume, right. was just as polished and fabulous and totally. gay and... Their, their judging seemed arbitrary yes. and very pointed. Yeah, and personal. It and was personal. weird. Yeah. Like, well, you just said that about that person, but the other person did the exact same thing and you didn't say anything. Oh boy, so then we get to the judging. Jiggly does her quick change. Sancho pay because my outfit is really a swimsuit. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Very Sancho pay. We get a couple more Sancho pays. Yeah, oh my god. It's just a Sancho pay, bright colors, Sancho pay. Sancho pay, very Sancho pay, very Sancho pay, very Sancho pay. Oh boy. Yeah, Billy V is talking about Milan's presentation. Ever, yes, her Milan's <laughs> I feel like dissertation. I feel like that's what it needs to be called. And he's talking about how it said, you know, the, the Milan, Milan invasion, invasion on the side. Everyone else sort of had a real message about pride. And the biggest thing about your boat is that you made it about you. It sort of offended me. She made it all about her, and I really was offended by it. It's like Willem's boat. Oh, so the one that made it, I mean, that was what was really crazy about it to me was that, like, Willem's bow was just, I'm a star. Right. Literally, that was the idea. Yeah. And that's not about her or offensive. Yeah. But Milan's boat that was Pointing like to paying homage to all of these things and the invasion on, on Fire Island and yeah. all of this stuff, this whole story and everything else, that's offensive and that's all about her. And I'm like, did you listen? What? <laughs> He was offended. I was like, what? Get the fuck over yourself. That was a mess. Yeah, Michelle Visage should be offended for the makeup that you did that everyone showed us. You saw that, right? Oh my god. <laughs> for me, this was the end of Billy B, where I was like, I used to like him. Like, I thought he was funny and sassy. And, yeah, and, yeah. And yeah. this was like, dude, what are you on? Oh, and then, no, what it really was. Because you barely fit in the boat. How dare dare you? What? Big is beautiful. Thank you, Kelly. You can go fuck yourself, Billy B. I was offended by her making it about her. <laughs> he turned into Paul Ann. <laughs> and I liked it. <laughs> but yeah, so then they get to Willem. I mean, again, she decided she was going to win this challenge, and she did. So she's being real flirty fun with the judges. I'm giving you maritime realness with the Starship Willem. <laughs> Amenities include Wi-Fi. There's a party deck and a business center. <laughs> making them laugh, and then they're like, oh, what does pride mean to you? And she talks about Prop 8, yeah. marrying her husband, and how now we can't be married anymore because of all this stuff and everything, and just like, here it is. And like, I'm looking great while I do it, too, yes. by the way. Yeah. And everyone's just like, oh. P.S., fuck you for having the most amazing body ever. <laughs> and then, oh my god, and Phoebe's like, oh, the death stares. It'd be a really fun drinking game for this season. Just every time Fifi. Every time Fifi gives death dagger. stare, just like drink. We get our second history lesson of the episode. Yes, and where Rue actually says Marsha P. Johnson. Exactly. <laughs> oh, and here it is, in case you didn't tell Jiggly earlier. I saw a documentary on her at a film festival. And, it just didn't and I don't know if it ever came out or not, but there was a documentary, I think, just called Marsha P. Johnson. And it was really interesting. It was just educational. Right. But, but it was oh, like, I didn't oh, you know should that. know your history. That's great. Interesting, yeah. yeah. And she talks about her and sort of just like, keep on breaking through. And yes. Like, you're the... Passing the torch and keep on keeping on. It's <laughs> just like a it was, couple yeah. of cute little platitudes, yep, you know? Yep, yeah, it's yep. gonna be great. My god, do you remember Stonewall, that movie? Fuck! When they had the white passing gay boy throw the first brick. Oh, yeah. Among other things um, that were Among wrong with that other movie. many problems with that movie, yeah. The movie was Garbage. terrible. It was really bad. This is where I was like, oh, Milan is going home. Where Michelle goes, if she takes oh. her wig off, then it is over. If she lip syncs tonight and that wig comes off, stop it already. Right. Not having it. <laughs> but anyway, Willem wins. Yes. Duh. It feels correct to win. When it's right, it's right. And Milan and Jiggly are in the bottom, and they have to lip sync to Born This Way. Yes, which, which is like appropriate. Fun, yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pride, yeah. yeah. It was a kind of bastardized version of Born This Way, but that's I okay. mean, I even noticed. And I don't know again if it's just because this is a Milan lip sync. You know, Seems and, to be. and the franticness is there's like, well, let's just do what we can. Or if they were trying to fit in all of the parts and the time allotted, I don't know. But it yeah. was a, it was. A they mess really had to get to the "Don't be a drag, be a queen." Sh exactly. Part of the song. Sure. Don't be a drag, just be a queen. Well, oh boy, yeah, this lip sync wasn't great. No, it was pretty bad. I feel bad. like it was a bummer because the song is so great. 
like for this could be such a great lip sync song. Such a great lip sync song. And this was like not very good. It starts and Milan is doing high knees. Yeah. Oh, high knees. I, I was like, are we in boot camp? Like, was, what is this? Barry's boot was, camp nonsense. It was. It was like, uh, it's always so frantic. Frantic, frantic, frantic. And then she does There's like no build. crazy high kicks just over oh, and over and over can't again. High yeah. kicks. I mean, I was impressed. I was impressed. But I was also like, like, what is this? I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah. And I mean, Jiggly's. Lip sync is pretty yep. is good. She was you know? giving me good energy for like a non psycho person, um, and you know. she did. Milan did look like like a like a deranged Big Bird or something. Oh you know? yeah, with like, that wig. Ah! I mean, that wig was absolutely like Big Bird clown. It was crazy. It was crazy. I did not like it. It goes in the disaster pile Ooh, for sure. For sure. Along with Along some other wigs. Madame Laqueur. Oh my god. Ugh. But it was like a pretty lackluster lip sync overall. On a whole, yeah. You know, it was fine. Um, Jiggly does a split and they all freak out. The music stops, you know. Well, and, then, and then Milan does a split. And then the shady editing is like crickets. Rude. You know, Jiggly has a lot of musicality and she's keeping yeah. it fun. Yeah. But it wasn't... that. This song is such like an anthem and a ballad. Exactly. And I didn't get that like... Yes, I was born this exactly. way and like fuck anybody who tells me different. Well, I mean, I really, I don't think either of them have fully embraced themselves at this, at moment. this moment in time. Yeah. So, uh, it's a shame because like this could have been fucking great. Huge. But anyway. Could have been iconic and it was not. Exactly. After the splits, it really goes downhill because yeah. Milan just tears off that wig. Yep, tears, tears off that off piece of her, fabric. <laughs> piece of fabric. <laughs> tears off her toga, her yellow toga. And it's just boy chess. It's just like it's just and I, boy chess. <laughs> I loved it. Maybe you were born that way. Yeah. You were born. You were born this way. Like I'm not saying I want Dita to be in the bottom, but if she had been in this lip sync, she would yeah. slay. Slayed it. Milan is not great at this point in the season and time and whatever at least uh, at presenting a point of view. In well, like a concise or a clear she manner. She seem to know, at a certain point during this episode, uh, somebody is like, what is your drag? What's your sort right. of style? You're in New York. Are you this kind of queen or that kind of queen? And she keeps saying like, oh, I don't want to fit into a category and I don't want to be in a box. And I'm like, that's totally cool. Right. But you also don't seem to know how, how you to want to yourself. describe or define yourself. Yeah. Even if that's different from everyone else. Right. So that, at its core, that's the problem. Yeah, exactly. Like, so Milan goes home. Yep. I mean, it was her third lip sync, so like... It was her third lip sync. I also think she sealed her fate with that wig. Absolutely, like, absolutely. Taking it off. Oh my god, and then watching Michelle just look over she at Rue like, and be like... Girl. If you said, if you keep her... Yeah. It was, it was like... No, ma'am. No, not having it. So quick commercial break, and then we will be right back. With, um, a insane untucked? Oh, yeah. Insane. <laughs> so it starts, and Rue, she's like... And the queens were joined on the runway by a boatload of dancing seamen. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Surrounded by a boatload of dancing seamen. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, in my head I was just imagining like a chorus line of like seamen. Like like the opening credits of Look Who's Talking, but it's like... <laughs> do, do, do. Dance and I. Yeah. <laughs> like some Busby Berkeley number with just a bunch of seamen. Like, mm, stupid. Yeah. I feel like that's got to be some Family Guy <laughs> episode or something. Like, right? You know? well, then we find out that on the runway, Rue was like, so, whose float do you think is the worst? Oh, yeah. Jigglies. <laughs> Jigglies. Jigglies. It's just so Well, funny. Jigglies was really bad, and it was really crafty, so Jigglies. <laughs> oh, this is they all get back. So, Jiggly, how, how, how do, do you feel? feel? I mean, you could tell throughout the episode that Chad was like really over how unprofessional he thought Jiggly was being, mm -hmm. and and this was the, I think the moment when Chad was like, okay, it's not cute anymore. You don't, uh, you're not on my same level. Like she didn't say this, but you could kind of yeah. see it in her eyes. Like, yeah. you don't deserve to be in this competition with me anymore. I'm a professional. Professional. And this whole untucked was rude. Yeah. Just rude across the board. Well, um is talking to Dita. Was that staying there when you were on the runway? You're only saying that to be a bitch. Yep. 
she was living on her high horse. Yes, sleep. she was. And then Rue comes on the TV and this wicked laugh. Oh my god, it was like, so this silly. Pink box. <laughs> So they walk into the gold room. Yes. And uh, ha ha, Kelly is there. <laughs> she was having so much fun. I mean, she's she has... just obsessed with who's being bitchy. Who's the bitch? Let's be bitchy. But she's just fabulous. Yeah. I really, I really do like her. Yeah. When I used to watch Fashion Police. Yeah. When Joan was Aww. obviously still on it and alive, she was always really fun. And fun yeah, I agree. Like with Joan. Yeah, that was. They were great together. Yeah, that was awesome. So Kelly's like. So give me the gossip. Tell me who's the biggest bitch. Latrice, Latrice goes, Fifi. No, I'm not. I'm just real. <laughs> She's a cunt. <laughs> She's a cunt. <laughs> it's like the second cunt of, of the episode. I was like, everyone's getting real sassy over here. Yeah. She's the bitch everyone wants to fuck. Oh my god. Oh right. To fuck someone in here, who would it be? Oh. Um, Fifi. I'll say Fifi because she's my sister. I will. A little Kai Kai action. <laughs> Kelly really was like, no, we're going around and everyone has to say who they would fuck in this room. Right? She's like the mean girl at the slumber party. They were like, right? can I just be by myself? Like, yeah. This is a lot. Yeah, um, I don't, I don't. <laughs> I, I, Jimmy Jr., I don't know, okay. <laughs> Jimmy Jr. And then Willem kind of breaks the ice and makes it fun. She's yeah. like, well, Latrice, because she obviously has a big piece. <laughs> and Latrice is like, if Willem's down, I'm down. Yeah. <laughs> I would do Latrice because I think our sex tape would sell a lot of copies. <laughs> <laughs> All her big blackness crushing my cadaver gray skin. So then Kelly has to leave and she's yeah. like, okay, bye, it's gonna be really let hard. Me, let me, like, let me just you're all fabulous. Me. She's like, oh, well, let me just, I'm just gonna sneak a peek or whatever. It's like, oh. Oh, this could be bitchy. She just was so obsessed with being bitchy. Well, then they say, what kind of queen would you be? And she'd be like, oh, I'd oh, be a real bitch. bitch. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. So then, Kenya has written a letter from I mean, beyond. This seemed like it might have been written under duress or something. <laughs> right? This was so weird to me. I mean, somebody definitely like helped her write it out in English. I wanted to right? see it. Right? Because I was kind of like, Is did someone Fifi like, did just she, make this did she up? Did she dictate it to someone? I, they typed it? I, yeah, I don't even... Fifi, well, because it was weird that Fifi was reading it. Yeah. I'm going to go down the list and be like, this is what I think your problem is. Basically. And Fifi's Except for first, Fifi. She's like, you're great. I love you. You're fabulous. You're my sister. I love you forever. Let's hang out. Great. That's why it seems so weird that it was like, did Fifi not read the thing about her? Right. She, right. like, what is go? Was it just stuff that they kikied about? And Fifi was like, you know what? You should write a letter and tell everyone how shitty they are. Why? We've never seen anything like this. No, and I don't. I don't remember ever seeing it again. No! This was insane. 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 Jiggly, you should have gone home in the first week. Girl, this is not a school. This is a competition. And it was interesting, like, who responded and how. Yes. So Jiggly is just like, I don't know what that bitch is talking about. I won that first, that lip sync And Ruth thought week. that I deserved to say and so. And if I'm, you know, good enough to be here, you know. Right. I wouldn't be here if I'm not, if I if wasn't, it wasn't good, good enough or whatever. And I was like, I mean, fair. It and is. also you totally did win that first lip sync. Yes. But also your time is coming. I, absolutely. So then next is Milan and she goes, This is a competition for women. You are a great performer, but you need to work more with your makeup. This is a competition for women. Your drag should be more feminine. And Milan's response is like, yeah, Maybe I, I agree with that. You know what? I agree with that. I was like, what? After this whole long... Well... When she's talking about the yeah. house and the androgyny yep. and the yep. long explanation oh, right. about because, yeah. I did Why this she put because her it's outfit based and... on this and yeah. I was like, this whole thing. I mean, this look particularly um, reminds me of the House of Aviant. Okay. Kevin's about what? setting trends. He's, his drag was edgy. And she's just like, yeah, I, I agree with that. I'm glad. She says, I'm glad that she said that. I was like, what? She seemed like they had already had the conversation about her androgyny she and was she was like, over it. Right. Well, and so then Sharon's, you need to learn how to walk in heels. <laughs> and Sharon's like, I can walk in heels. Is it a shady montage of her like slip sliding around? It's pretty bad. Was it great? No. And then Latrice. Oh boy, I mean, she came, you can't come for lunch. You me. can't, well, and that was what was so funny was that I, because I did not remember this at all. No, I had forgotten. And I was just like, what is this? Popcorn, like, yeah. what? But so then I was like, well, she can't come for Latrice. Like, what is she going to fucking say? Like, when she goes, 
I know that you're mad. You were mad at me from Snatch Game for last week, but I really think you're mad at yourself for underperforming. And then be careful with your costumes too. What? I've never worn a costume. <laughs> I've worn gowns. <laughs> Love it. Love it. You could tell Latrice was pissed. You're yelling at me no, like no, I know. No, I'm just trying to figure out what you're about, about costumes because I don't wear costumes. These all sounded like Fifiisms. And then for Fifi to be like, they're all right. She, everything is right. Well, she did say, she was like, I mean, this is just stuff we've all talked about. It's no surprise. I mean, she's only telling the truth and the truth hurts. <laughs> oh, and then, well, this was great. She talks to Willem and she goes, you have a beautiful body, but you have a man face. <laughs> <laughs> she's right. I have a very handsome face. You have a man face. <laughs> I mean, it is Willem's biggest problem is like the five o'clock shadow. I mean, yes. it'll come up, but uh, you know, I don't know. This was just, all of this was so aggressive and petty. Well, yeah, so that next, Dita, fix your wigs. They're terrible, blah, blah, blah. And you better burn that teddy bear dress. Oh, yeah. And Fifi, even Fifi's like, oh, this is harsh. She's yeah. like, oh, my God. Like, she's like, this is really harsh, guys. Like, I don't even know. Wow, this is kind of harsh. Like, Fifi is like, she went too far. <laughs> also, I liked the teddy bear dress. <laughs> I liked it, too. And then Dita seems really upset. I know. She's like, Kenya said she liked it. What the fuck? Oh, yeah, that was good. I thought that was an interesting reaction, too, where it's like, you know what? Fine, say what the fuck you want, but, like, don't be two-faced to me and be like, oh, my God, I love that dress. Yeah. That's the ugliest fucking That's skirt. That's the ugliest fucking bracelet I've ever <laughs> seen. <laughs> Fifi has a lot of opinions about Willem this week. She, I mean, she, rightly so. She does talk about how she's like, how come... They're giving me all this criticism about my makeup and how it's too dark and how right. it's too this and da 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 and I'm trying to change that and yes. whatever and they never haven't said one thing about Willem's five o'clock shadow and like what is up with that? And when uh, Kenya said that he has a man face, she wasn't lying. Ah! And you know what? Why do the judges not clock her makeup? Well, and then, so then Fifi is just going off about Willem's oh, yeah. acting last week. She's just like, that was acting. That was fake. That was fake. It's fake. Again, there's no gray area. That was acting. She's being a fake bitch. Yep. Blah, blah, blah. Like, yep. there's no way. And she's just playing for the judges or whatever. And it's like, oh, yeah, but it worked. You know what I mean? Yes. So, like, maybe get over it. I don't know. And then Willem is just like, I mean, if someone thinks that was acting, then I hope it was a casting agent because that was some seriously good acting and I want to get cast. I was like, oh my God, of course. Like, oh my God. Of course. Yeah. Absolutely. If anybody thinks that I was acting, I hope it's a casting director. And they're talking about Latrice's wet t-shirt contest. Oh. It's like, oh, my alter ego, Resputa. How are you, Dern? And her pads just filling with water. Oh my God. I died. I died. <laughs> So then we have a seventh history lesson. Oh, I know, oh. right? Oh, what is pride to you? So tell me more about pride and what does it mean? How do you guys celebrate pride? With yeah, what does it mean to I, you? I just love chatting. Like, I did my time with the fucking pride parades. I'm, I did it, Girl. you guys. <laughs> Done with I put my time in. Yeah. Well, then it was interesting. Sharon was like, well, they don't ask me to do pride parade in, in Pittsburgh. And I, I was it. like, I'm sure they do now. I'm sure they do now. They sort of devolve into teaching Jiggly again, like, yes. oh, well, what do you know about Stonewall? And did you know that, like, if you dressed as a woman, you could be arrested and put in jail? And she's like, what? what? Like, she seems really clueless sure. about the herstory. I'm not opposed to learning. And you know what, girl? It's not even a matter of, like, go take a class. Pay attention. And it's not only today. That's life, bitch. They weren't too super condescending about it. No. And and Jiggly seemed open to being like, wow, I really haven't thought about this enough. Yes. And I should. And yeah. so hopefully that was, you know, a catalyst for her to kind of delve in more to. Maybe for other people to be like, oh, I guess I've never thought about stuff like that. Sure. You know, I think a lot of people go about, you know, it's like, oh, I've walked by this thing a million times. Or, oh, I've done this. Or, I've been right. to Pride and I've never actually thought about it. Because, like Jiggly said, it's now a it's a party. big party and you have fun and you get drunk and you go out and do whatever. And you're like, yay, rainbow, black, you know, whatever. Yeah. You know, Comcast gave me this rainbow thing. Free hat! Yeah, but like you know, to actually pause and think about it is like a good thing roots. to do, and I like yeah. what this show. This show makes a very good effort at doing that yes. consistently. Yes, and so then, well, they cut back to you know, oh, and then the girls went back on stage and they lip sang to this and blah blah blah. They show unseen footage where Milan. Milan whispers to me, 
The girls are gunning for you. Be careful. That was weird of Milan to say. Very strange. Yeah, but she made it seem more nefarious. Exactly. Like, we think you should go next. And maybe she was trying to light a fire under her ass. I don't know. Maybe. It seemed odd. But anyway. Yeah. But that was this week. Yeah. Dramatic. Crazy. It was really, like... Fucking Kenya coming out of there just like petty and rude. So cheers, cheers. to next week. Yes. We will see you next Thursday or sooner for Patreon. Thank you guys. We appreciate it. So cheers to Patreon. Cheers. Cheers to Patreon. You deserve Cheers it. to our patrons. Yeah. I don't wear costumes, honey.